Hi, my name is Dana, and today I'm going to discuss some items that come up over the week. Hopefully nothing related to the coursework I'm doing. A little while ago, I saw that American Idol was cancelled after 15 seasons. Now, I am not a fan of American Idol. I mean, a couple of the contestants were pretty good, but I don't... Let's put it this way, I am not a fan of reality TV, period. If I want reality, I'll watch my house, and that's pretty much that. But one thing that I was thinking about is that with American Idol no longer taking up a time slot, it makes me wonder about how many shows get missed by the general public because there's no time slot for it. And that is either awesome or terrible. It's either one or the other. One thing I've always considered is why should we be restricted to the limited time slots that's available on a particular TV station. And for example, I was looking at A and E's channel and there was a day that was completely filled with the first 48 hours. Okay, I can get that it's a, maybe a marathon, but there were other days where it was completely filled with yet another show. That may be a problem. Now one thing I've considered is why not build a web service where independent companies can submit their their video and viewers can watch it at any time they want. I know, I know. There's YouTube, but the one thing I don't like about YouTube is the amount of, I don't want to call it uncreative, but there seems to be a particular pattern to YouTube. You'll either find a lot of copyright work being streamed, and that me what I mean is people who don't own the copyright is publishing it online. There is also people making enemy music videos, basically taking their favorite song and their favorite anime and publishing it online. The same does occur with um, other videos and music and yeah. It seems that there are there is a limitation to how much actual original content makes it to YouTube. A lot of it could be the time it takes to create it, or whatever. Now, the biggest thing about shows on CBS or ABC, it all depends on the appeal to advertisers. And that's my opinion. It doesn't matter too much what people like, but how many people can watch it and view the commercials, if that makes sense. It's, if the show doesn't get a good rating and, or X amount of people, 
then the exposure to commercials is limited. Therefore, people are not going to pay to have that show produced. Therefore, it gets canceled. And that is despite if there is a niche group that enjoys the show. I've seen shows that I've enjoyed that got canceled. And yeah. But what if there was like a service where original content owners could submit the video to a server and if they get a lot of a lot of votes or something they can be put into a time slot for featured. That's actually what I was thinking about during the week while doing homework. Now When I was on Showtime any time this week, I was actually watching Honey Dreadful. It's a good show and I do enjoy it a lot. Now, then I might have ventured into Showtime After Dark. Yeah, about that. The movie I started to watch was a lot more sex than an actual story and it wasn't even pornographic sex it was soft core it made me wonder about a few items now I don't mind nudity and I don't mind sex within a show or a movie what I personally think differentiate from porn and a creative story is the usage of a story. What I mean is, why do male X and female Y have sex? And that's what I think about whenever I see something like that in one of those movies. When when I wrote sex scenes, which there are there is some in an upcoming book, I was thinking more of how it will occur organically and what I mean is, is to think about Psycho the movie by Albert Hitchcock it was considered the first movie to show someone sitting on a toilet the obvious reason for someone sitting on the toilet is pretty obvious. Either they're using it as a seat or they're using it. There is, but it can be incorporated into a story if the other male actor is brushing his teeth and the it can be incorporated into the story if the male lead and the female lead are actually having a conversation while the guy is brushing his teeth. It does not actually mean that there are fart jokes about. Now, one thing that a friend of mine mentioned was when dealing with anything that might get a little raunchy, I might want to consider why. Why is this occurring? Why is this happening? And can the story live without it? If the story cannot be pushed forward by a sex scene, it should be cut. Now, and let's get another example of a semi-sexual scene in the novel I'm reading, Vampire Academy. Now, to avoid spoilers, I'm just going to avoid over-spoiling it. I'm just going to say that the instance started as a need for survival in terms of feeding the vampire, but it turned into a drug habit, a jealousy over time, which I actually get. It was actually put in very nicely. 
and but there was there's also circumstances where in other stories someone comes up to a vampire and say just bite my neck I miss you I love you blah blah unless the vampire was using memor was mesmerizing the person that doesn't make much sense and the final topic is artistic nudity versus just nudity again it all falls into what is happening and what the purpose of the photograph is I had displayed the Brianna skin deep pictorial to some people and they said it was very hot I'll take that compliment and but what I was doing with the pictorial was extending what actually happens in the story for those who don't know the haven't seen the pictorial it is available in at drive through comics and at the dark and visual store it actually focus on what she did at Darling Moonshine now the set may not look like Darling Moonshine because I actually used a pre-made set from Iron Man 13 that's the, that's the vendor's name from Renderosity and used poses from that as well as other now and my purpose for that was to show the central side to the striptease rather than over sexualizing it I hope I accomplished that but I'm always waiting for comments and I think that did qualify as artistic nudity now I am on the fence I am on the fence of what I would consider a photo where a woman's on all four and her ass is facing the camera and I'm trying to figure out what exactly is the purpose of this photo now in a different photo a woman is standing that displays her entire entire form and curve and that seems more to artistic nudity than the former I just mentioned and if fingers are touching any genitalia that really stretches the definition and yet I see a lot of that at DeviantArt I mean yes a lot of it is hot I'm not denying that but is it artistic nudity and I do have my opinion but I also don't believe in censoring it is not my job if DeviantArt had a problem with it they can deal with it and and I like I said I do have my opinion I and I have a certain way I like to go when I create artistic nude renders and I hope people do appreciate them but I think that it falls into a line of you cannot really define art people have tried and people have failed what I mean is that about wraps up this subject if you have anything you want my thoughts on leave a message in the comments and I'll discuss it in the next vlog or I will just directly reply depending on the nature of the comment okay. mostly because the comments will only let me write so much and if it's something that I need to cover in depth then a vlog would be a more suitable format and have a great evening.